Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week, we are taking our little studio behind us, the cute little cottage, and we are giving it a little bit of a facelift for fall. So not only are we gonna be working inside, but we're gonna be working outside as well, just giving it a little fresh look, and I think you're gonna really enjoy this video. Inside, we're gonna be working on all of the dried flowers. So we hang flowers this time of year. Anything that doesn't sell in the field, we cut it. Anything that can dry, we hang from the ceilings and the rafters, and it's just filled with beautiful blooms. And we get those just drying for later in the season for fall wreaths. We've got a ton up there already. I also have ordered in some dried flowers from one of my friends down in Eugene. They own a very large, cut and dried flower farm called Charles Little and Company. So if you're looking for some beautiful drieds packed in a box shipped to your house, you can visit their website. I will link it below. Fantastic product. Oh my gosh, the space, if you follow her on Instagram, you'll know the amazing space, the barns, the beauty of their farm. And then to have a piece of that in your home is so fun. So I order in every year some of the items that we just don't grow, uh, some of the items that we maybe didn't have enough in our fields that she's dried, and then I can put on my ceiling to use in our dried bouquets, and then also to have for dried wreaths and crafts and things like that. So I'm glad you're here with me and I'm glad you can uh, tag along. Uh, Emma and I are going to start on this project. Riley is off getting some flowers for a wedding, uh, taking our load of mixed bouquets to the market. So we're just going to get started on this beautiful day. I've been randomly going out into the garden and testing out things to dry. So this year I did the marigolds, which I knew would be a good one. And they are beautiful and they're so bright. I really want to do more. I've only done two yellow bunches. And so probably today I'll go out and go collect more. We have orange as well. I tried um, a cherry dianthus and that turned out kind of cool. I've never tried that. The stems are a little short, but it's a really dark color. And then I tried the ageratum, which is a really fun bee friendly flower. And it's kind of a wildflower. It has like purple fuzzies on the end. And those turned out really good too. My favorite though this year that I've done is the Lysianthus, which we did last year and I was making a mental note that I need to do that again. So today I'll probably go out and cut as much Lysianthus as I can, hang it up. It turned out ugh, so beautiful. I can't remember if the white ones turned out very good, but um, I kind of have a feeling they didn't. They turned like a brown. That's the thing about white flowers. A lot of them kind of turn brown, but we have a champagne color and then a peachy color. And I believe they're gonna turn out really good. So I wanna go out and collect more to hang up on our ceiling. We 
have a local farmer that lets us come and take the extra hops. So they have just a patch of their field that they leave up for us and then they give us a call and they're like, hey, come grab them. And we do. And it's really funny because <laughs> they come in these huge ropes and then you have to pull them down and they all fall on top of you and it's kind of a psycho process, but they look good. And hang them on the ceiling. Hang them on the ceiling, fresh oh. hops. And they're itchy. They're super itchy. If you go collect hops, make sure to wear long sleeves. I still have marks on my hand from doing that last week. So we also always have calendula salve. So if anything that is remotely itchy or there's so many things that we touch every day and we're like why do we have hives on our arms and who knows there's a few things we know that give us hives and this is one of them and especially if they give you little cuts they burn for the rest of the day so we have calendula oil and i put that everywhere and it totally helped it wasn't burning all day anymore so that's a good tip do when you're drying your flowers is the stage that you harvest them is critical on some flowers so things like straw flower you don't want them to be so open that they're starting to go to seed it happens and you can cut those out if you need to but the other thing is is that normally we would cut like lisianthus in a seven to ten stem bunch depending on what we're doing but here I've just got five bunches because we want that airflow to go through some of the leaves are kind of thick and so you're always thinking about that like pulling off some of that stuff some of the extra leaves help dry it but then i just cut the bouquet down instead of doing 10 stems like that there's less airflow so dividing it in half and then i'll hang it flowers there's a couple things you need to know about it because we get a lot of questions how do I dry my flowers how do I extend my season and that's typically um, what we're trying to do with our dried flowers is just bring them into fall and into winter when people are craving that beautiful fresh farm look but in a dried colorful way so we spend a lot of time on the dried. Some ways we do that to ensure that we have really good blooms is we like to dry them in a cool, dark space. So the studio, for the most part, we keep the lights off in the summertime just to keep the cool of the day in. And then we have big fans that blow on the flowers, which helps cool us as well if we're making bouquets. And it just it helps circulate the air so the airflow will dry the flowers. One of the other things we do 
is anything that we've picked fresh off the farm, so say the peonies, we box them up, we tape them really closed so that no bugs can get out, and we put in a pesticide. So this is the only thing that we do for drives. This is an insect guard, it's called ProZap. You can get them anywhere. You definitely wanna wear gloves with this. You take it out of this, I haven't opened this one yet, but um, you take it out of this like plastic little container and you cut them into small squares and put them in the boxes. It kills all the like weevils and things like that because the one thing you don't want is to make this beautiful dried wreath and then off it goes to a customer and then they're like, what the heck? My house is infested with these weevils and moths and grossness. So we, that's the one thing that we do do and um, it works really, really well. So we just kind of close up the boxes, seal them in, drop in just, I think it's like a little tab like this and we're good to go and then we'll be able to pull them out fresh flowers. And that also in, ensures that they have as long as possible of that dark, cool area. We just store them in our storage unit and that's it. Finding room for all the boxes and things that we have to store is a little, we have to get a little creative in my small little studio. So Emma and I were looking above our cooler um, is a nice big space. We're gonna stick these boxes up there. Um, they're just gonna go for a couple weeks, uh, three to four weeks, and then we'll take them out and wrap them up and sell them off. Hope you enjoyed that video all about our dried flowers and kind of the process we do here i know our space our studio is pretty small we can only dry so many flowers but what i have just learned over the years it doesn't take much even if you are drying a few flowers in your garage or in your basement you know it just is a little bit that goes a long way in fall and fall decorating so I tell you, get out into your garden, cut a few things, get them hung up, upside down, and maybe a little fan going on them, and you will be so pleased because on one of those fall days when the rain is coming down and you've poured yourself a beautiful cup of coffee or tea, and you've just set about crafting and doing and making the home cozy for fall. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed, we ask, please follow, give us a thumbs up and a comment. We would love to hear from you. And again, thank you for tagging along with us today. Much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very, very soon. Bye-bye.